Good morning all of you. My name is Ashutosh Rastogi. I am a teacher by profession. My mission is to impart quality education for all. For that purpose, I am creating these videos. If you appreciate my work, then please do like my video and subscribe my channel so that I could get the motivation to prepare more videos. Anyways, in our last lecture, we were discussing about generation and detection methods of pulse amplitude modulation systems. So we'll continue our discussion with the generation detection methods of pulse width modulation and pulse position modulation systems. So these are the outlines of today's lecture. We'll start up with the basic definitions of pulse width modulation and pulse position modulation. Then we'll describe how we're going to generate pulse width modulation. Then we'll discuss about generation of PPM or pulse position modulation. We will actually try to understand how we are going to generate pulse position modulation with the help of pulse width modulation. So this will basically the indirect method of pulse position modulation generation. Then we will discuss how we are going to convert our PPM waveform to pulse width modulated waveform. Then how we are going to demodulate our pulse width modulated waveform. Then at last we will conclude with the applications of pulse width modulation and pulse position modulation. So in pulse width modulation, the width of the carrier pulse is being varied as per the amplitude variation in the message signal. So we can say that in pulse width modulation, the width or the duration of my carrier pulse will be going to varied as per the amplitude variation in my message signal. Suppose if amplitude of my message signal is being increasing, then we will going to get some high width or large duration pulses and when we will going to have low amplitude of my message signal then the pulse width will going to get reduced accordingly whereas in pulse position modulation the position of the carrier pulse is being varied as per the amplitude variation of my message signal so this particular figure shows how we will going to generate pulse width modulation with the help of comparator so in comparator we will be having to input at non inverting terminal we are going to apply our message signal then at inverting terminal we are going to apply a sawtooth waveform which will going to act as the carrier pulse like this particular figure is showing we are going to apply our message signal at non inverting terminal whereas at the inverting terminal we are going to apply a sawtooth waveform as the carrier pulse and at the receiver we are going to get the PWM outcome. So how are you going to get it? We will try to understand it. So the input to the comparator are the message signal and a sawtooth waveform as we had already described which will operate at the carrier frequency. Obviously we are talking about our sawtooth waveform. But here one condition is there if by this method we have to generate our pulse width modulated waveform then the peak value of the input signal should be less than the peak value of my sawtooth waveform then only this method will get applicable. So this particular figure shows the principle of PWM waveform generation whereas this above waveform shows my carrier pulse this sawtooth waveform and then this green color waveform is actually showing my message signal and this orange color waveform is actually showing our pulse width modulation or pulse width modulated waveform. So what is actually happening in this particular figure is our comparator will going to compare the instantaneous value of this sawtooth waveform carrier pulse and the instantaneous value of my message signal. So obviously the comparator will going to compare it and depending upon the value it will going to generate either negative pulses or positive pulses. What it is actually doing is it is actually comparing this input signal and this sawtooth waveform as we can see that in this particular duration the input signal value is less than the sawtooth waveform so obviously it will going to generate this negative pulses and from here onwards we could say that the amplitude of my message signal exceeds in comparison to my sawtooth waveform so it will going to generate a positive pulse so we could easily say that our comparator outcome will going to generate a positive pulse when my message input signal is greater than the amplitude value of my carrier pulse else it is generating our negative pulses. So we could see that it is actually being generating a 
varied pulsating signal whose pulse width is actually being dependent upon the strength of my message signal. Hence, we are going to generate our pulse width modulated waveform. So this is the complete description what we have discussed in our last slide. The comparator produces the output depending upon the input applied that is either high or low or we could say that either positive or negative. It produces a positive or negative pulses depending upon the magnitude of the message signals and the sawtooth waveform. Obviously, if the magnitude of my message signal is greater than the magnitude of my carrier pulse or sawtooth pulse, it will going to generate a positive pulse. And if the magnitude of my message signal is less than the magnitude of my carrier waveform or sawtooth pulse, then it will going to generate a negative pulse. So clearly the width of the pulse is being dependent upon the amplitude of the message signal. Hence, we could claim that we have generated a pulse width modulated waveform. Here, one thing should be noted that as a comparator, we have used IC710 or you could say that IC710 could used as a comparator. Now, next topic is how we are going to generate our pulse projection modulated waveform. Obviously, with the help of pulse width modulated signal. Initially, we are going to apply our pulse width modulated waveform to the inverter whose responsibility is to invert the incoming pulses i mean wherever we will be having a positive pulse it will going to convert into the negative one and wherever we will be having a negative pulse it will going to convert it into the positive one so it will just completely invert whatever input has been applied to it then the output of this inverter will get passed through the differentiator which will going to differentiate our incoming pulses so differentiator basically produces and impulses or short duration pulses at the falling and the rising edge of the pulses. So then this differentiator output will get passed through the positive edge triggered pulses. So whatever positive edge triggered pulse generator gonna do is it will going to generate a fixed duration fixed amplitude pulses wherever we will going to get the positive edge pulses. So we can say that here we will be getting a pulsating output a fixed amplitude pulsating outcome whose position is actually being dependent upon the amplitude of my message signal so we can say that this is how we will we will going to generate our pulse position modulation outcome so this is the block diagram of your ppm generation with the help of pulse width modulation signal or pulse width modulated waveform so here is the description the input of the ppm generator is a pwm signal then the inverter reverses the polarity of the pulses so it is actually being converted your positive pulse to the negative one and negative pulses to the positive one so it will just reverses the polarity as it passes through the differentiator what we're going to have is we're going to achieve positive spikes where the original pwm pulse is going from high to low and we will going to get the negative spikes where the original pulse or PWM pulse is going from low to high. We will try to understand it through the waveforms. So here is the PWM waveform. This orange color waveform is actually showing the PWM waveform. So what our inverter will gonna do is it will going to invert this negative pulse to the positive one and this positive pulse to the negative one. So this second axis actually being showing inverted as well as differentiated waveform so we have combined those two operations in this particular figure so what we're going to get is we're going to get this sort of pulse so this is the negative pulse so when we're going to invert it we're going to get the positive pulse so what differentiator will gonna do is it will going to generate an impulsating type of signal or impulse type of signal at the rising edge of my waveform and again this impulsating type of signal or impulse signal will get generated at the falling edge of the pulse and this particular thing will keep going on so now from this particular differentiated output how we'll going to get our ppm outcome we will actually going to pass this impulse type of signal through the positive edge triggered pulse generated circuit which will going to generate a fixed amplitude and fixed duration pulses wherever 
it will going to get the positive pulse this one so this will going to generate positive pulse here we'll be having a pulse then again positive as triggered pulse will be having this pulse then again at this particular positive pulse will be having this pulse and so on so on close observation we can say that this pulsating signal actually being dependent upon the instantaneous amplitude of my massive signal this is actually a cross mapping here what we are trying to do is the position of this particular waveform is actually being following the width of my pulse but initially we have studied that in pulse width modulation the width of my pulse is actually being proportional to the instantaneous amplitude of my massive signal so conversely we could say that here the position of my pulse is actually being following the amplitude variation of my initial massive signal so this is how we are going to generate our pulse position modulation signals so this is the description whatever we have discussed so far spikes are actually fed to a positive edge triggered fixed width pulse generator so what it will going to do is it will going to generate a fixed width pulse whenever a positive edge triggered pulse is applied to it or fed to it so generator generates a pulses of fixed width when a positive spikes appears otherwise it will remain silent the occurrence of these pulses are dependent on the input message signal hence the pulses produced is the ppm whatever we have discussed so far one thing should be noted here is the fixed width pulse generator can be a mono shot device likewise ic74121 or ic555 timer etc we could use any of these ic's to generate our positive edge triggered pulses so this particular slide shows how we're going to convert our pulse position modulation signal to the pulse width modulation signal so initially this particular slide shows how with the help of edge triggered flip flop we will going to convert our ppm outcome to the pwm waveform so here we are using an rs flip flop where at the reset input of my flip flop is the generated ppm waveform and at set input we're going to apply a fixed duration clock pulses and at the receiving side or at q we'll going to have our pulse width modulation how we're going to discuss it so let us say this above figure is actually being showing our ppm outcome and at the lower side is actually showing our constant duration clock pulses So the SR flip flop is set to positive edge triggered with the clock. The output remains at high till the positive edge from the PPM resets it. So obviously the output of Q will remain high till our positive edge triggered PPM input will going to reset it. Whatever I want to mention here at this particular point is the outcome of Q will remain high till the output of my ppm waveform will going to reset it so we could conclude that the larger duration is there between two successive pulses or we could say that there is a larger difference between the position of two successive pulses the wider width of the pulse will going to get so obviously the width of the pulse is being dependent upon the position of the ppm signal and the position of the ppm signal is being directly proportional to the instantaneous amplitude of my massive signal so hence we could say that we have generated a pwm waveform this is again the explanation whatever we have discussed so far the more delay in the arrival of pulses that is your pulse position modulated waveform the longer duration q will remain high i mean if there is a larger delay between two consecutive pulses q will remain high or will going to get a larger width pulse it is again set in the next clock period by the positive edge of the clock pulses hence we can say that the output of the flip flop is the train of pulses whose width is clearly being dependent upon the arrival of the incoming ppm pulses so in this way we can say that we have generated the pwm waveform whose width varies with the amplitude of the actual message signal so now we're going to discuss how we're going to demodulate our pulse width modulated waveform so what we're going to do is we're going to apply our pulse width modulated pulses to the integrator so what integrator basically going to do is it will going to 
integrate our incoming PWM pulses. So since PWM waveform are the flat pulses, if we will going to integrate it, we will going to get the ramp. So again, that ramp is maintained at the maximum peak time. Then after the fixed time, the voltage will return to zero voltage. So what we are going to do is we have to maintain that ramp till the maximum peak time. Then after that fixed time, the voltage will get returned to zero. So as the width of pulses are different, these ramps will reach different heights in each cycle, which is directly proportional to the width of the pulse or amplitude of the message signal. So let us try to understand it through some figure, whatever we have discussed. So let us say we'll be having this first waveform as our PWM waveform or it is the input to our integrator. So what our integrator will going to do is it will going to integrate this pulses. So we'll going to get this ramp till this duration. Then in the second point, we have said that we'll going to maintain that ramp till the fixed time duration maximum time. So we'll going to retain that ramp till the maximum time duration. So this is the maximum time duration where we have to retain our ramp. Then after some time, whenever next pulse arrives, it will again going to integrate it and then we'll going to maintain that till the maximum time duration. So what I want to say at this particular moment is this duration, this duration and this duration will remain same and all three pulses will going to achieve three different heights depending upon the width of those pulses. So I mean if the width of pulse is high obviously it will going to achieve the greater ramp height and if the width of the pulse is low it will going to achieve a low ramp height. So now what we're going to do is we'll just simply going to add up the pulses of fixed width and amplitude to the signal and then we're going to pass through the limiter circuit which produces the PAM signal. So what our limiter circuit will going to do is it will going to limit the actual strength of my signal or we could say that it will actually going to cut out the signal and we are left with only this signal, this signal and this signal or we could say that our limiter circuit will going to clip off or it will going to subtract this much amount of signal from the incoming signal. So we are left with only this portion, this portion, which is actually being showing in this particular figure. On close observation, we could say that we'll be actually achieving a pulse amplitude modulated waveform. So from this PAM signal, we could easily generate our analog signal via passing through a low pass filter as we had already studied in our last lecture. So this particular figure shows the complete four waveform structures that we have studied or learned in our earlier slide initially we'll be having this pwm waveform then we'll going to pass them through the integrator circuit and retain the ramp till the peak time so depending upon the width of our pulses we have achieved different ramp heights then we'll going to add up fixed amplitude and fixed duration pulses to this variable ramp height signals then we'll going to pass through a clipper circuitry which will going to clip out this portion of my signal and this is how we're going to achieve our PAM signal and when we're going to pass our PAM signal through the low pass filter we're going to get our analog signal back. So this is how we'll actually going to generate our incoming message signal back from the PWM waveform. This particular slide shows the comparison between the pulse duration modulation and pulse position modulation. So pulse position modulation is more power efficient because excessive pulse duration consumes considerable amount of power. So obviously if the pulse duration is high then in order to generate that pulse we have to consume or we have to dissipate or deliver larger amount of power uh, whereas in pulse position modulation we have to deliver a small amount of power in comparison to our PWM waveform. So it is much more power efficient in comparison to our PWM waveform. It is expected that PPM is immune to additive noise since the addition noise only perturbs the amplitude of the pulses rather than the positions. Let us say this is our PPM output. So whenever we are going to pass our PPM outcome through the channel, noise will going to add it up like this one. 
so they generally affect the amplitude of my message signal rather than the position of my message signal but in pulse position modulation whatever we are doing is we are actually trying to encode our information in the positioning of my pulses so as long as we are in a state to preserve the position of barrier pulses till then instant we can say that our signal is not get distorted so that is why we are saying that pulse position modulation is more immune toward the additive white gaussian noise or additive noise however since the pulses cannot be made perfectly rectangular in practice obviously there is some sort of transition delay in which pulse goes from low to high or high to low it is not actually instantaneous it will take some time so the detection of zero pulses is somehow still affected by the additive noise so we cannot claim that pulse position modulated waveform is completely free from noise there exists certain amount of noise due to the transition time in the pulses so here are the application of pwm and ppm waveform so the randomness of pulses in pwm waveform i mean by randomness of pulses we mean to say that we don't know wherever we will going to get a pulse and wherever we not the width and the position of my pulses will be completely random so they does not allow us to use them efficiently in the communication purpose especially if we talk about the time division multiplexing so they are actually not suitable for the time division multiplexing some of the applications are motor control so obviously with the help of pulse width modulation we could deliver a specific amount of power to the motor so that we could control its speed the delivery of power which is precisely regulated with the width of pulses this is actually how we'll going to control the speed of my motor ppm is also being used for the radio control model of aircraft boats as well as cars so these are the various applications of our pulse position modulation and pulse width modulation so these are the various references thank you very much for your patient hearing